what I need is success. What I need is success. Hey, 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 just rock out. Second chance is a show to help everybody be victorious in everything you do. Second chance, we envision it to grow and we're going to provide jobs for people and really change the world. This is a great opportunity to be a great influence to show kindness, caring for one another. And I think that's what society really needs right now. First of all, what you, what you guys are doing is absolutely immaculate, and I am just so grateful that there's people like you that still exist in this world. Change the world, and I think that's what society really needs right now. What you, what you guys are doing is absolutely immaculate, and I am just so grateful that there's people like you that still exist in this world. Change the world, change the world. Second chance, change the world. Second chance, change the world. All right, we right here at Second Chance Radio, and we night now with Second Chance Flaming topics. We got Legacy City in the yep, house. Yeah. Some legacy. Uh, Lauren should be coming soon, but we like to give shout outs to Veronica Flores, Amy Faith, you know, and the rest of the crew. We like to give a shout out to my uh, film crew, Gus, and his wife, Christian. I said it right at this time. I think that's right. been practicing. No. Like, <laughs> I've been practicing, Christian. <laughs> and today we got some great hot topics going on today, right now. You know, right now we want to talk about everyone right now need to go ahead and submit to secondchancesaveslives.org. We about to go on pre-production. We doing great things and we're going to put you on there and show what, what you need and what you want and this, what was going on with you right now in the crisis situation that we have around the world and society today around our city. So right now, please go to secondchancesaveslives.org. That's the number two. N is in Nancy. D is in David. C-H-A-N-C-E. Saves S A V E S lives L I V E S dot org. I would teach you to turn <laughs> out. A B C. No, we like to have fun on, but seriously, go there uh, uh, to second chance saves lives dot org and, and submit uh, for any crisis situation you might have so we can help you. We are again, we're almost in pre production and we need to get you real soon so we can put you in the rotations uh, of the episodes and stuff like that. Like today, we have Cedric uh, City. Uh, city, City, Cedric, Legacy, uh, Legacy City. City. Legacy. You know, I'm blessed with him. Legacy City. <laughs> no, Mr. Paul Natal. The Natal. I'm not saying all of them. Natal. I'm not. I can't say that. That's Friday. right. Yeah, that's right. Monday. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then today uh, we have Second Chance Red Carpet Sunday, which will have our host Hawthorne James. You might have seen him in uh, uh, Five Heartbeats. Uh, speed. speed. Uh, what uh, else? Of, he been in many plays. I can't right. even name his playlist. He right. got a, a lot of plays. So he he gonna be with us soon, pretty soon, to talk about what he got going on, things of that nature. But right now we we here to talk about some flaming things, some flaming hot topics. Yeah. Second Chance Radio Show is a board. We also have James Lockhart. You know, I say on the wheels of steel because he's trying to trying to teach us how to do these things, man. I just can't do it. But I said, Len James, won't you go and do it? Let me just take the mic. But uh, <laughs> he's here. He's still he, he's still dressing like. Uh, let me see. He got, uh, he, he, he got an Israelite shirt on with a. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 I'm, a I'm a minister of vest on, so he can he can preach to both people today. There you go. He, hey, he shout out to Tommy Carver and, and the rest of the people out there uh, who's Amen. listening now. Val, uh, his mother, and everybody. Uh, God bless definitely. you and your family. Uh, whatever things is going on, but at the same time, you know, we keep it moving with the. The, the flaming topic. Seth, what you got today, man? You man. Look at, he got a red shirt on with a black hat. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Looking like, I don't know. But I'm like a checkerboard. Yeah. Crown me, player. Yeah. No. Man, what's going on with these people staging these events, man? The guy from Empire, man. You see, America, we already in trouble for the division already. Right, right, right. right. We don't need, especially, uh, you went and blamed two Nigerians at that. I and mean, he, we, said, he said it was white. No, nah, two Nigerian brothers. I'm like, oh, brother, we already got enough against them. We don't need you staging no no racial attacks, man. I, I don't understand that. You know, I heard that, but like I said, I don't I don't know, I don't know. But the way it sound, it seemed like that something was set up or something was I don't know. So he what said happened. they were white. He said they were white, but then when they dug into it, yeah, it so, happened to be you know, same two. Guys. Now check this out. They got both of the phone records where you setting up. All right, now nine, nine o'clock. <laughs> right, better be right. with them ropes. Right, right. You know, like. <laughs> Like, the, hey, you know that we ain't on government man, shutdown no more. Yeah, the feds got your phone, yeah, players. Come on, man. I mean, yeah. You yeah, yeah if something I, like that to state uh, that, that'd be... Like, uh, come on, dude. I, I don't know. I don't know. I would have been... 
Did he really break his ribs, though? I don't know, man. I'll tell you what. If you want to leave Empire, stop. Just look, look. My contract up, Lee Daniels. I don't, you don't got to stage a whole kill ass, me I mean, butt whoop. I, I don't. You I, know. Kill me off. <laughs> like, I know Lee Daniels. He kill me off. <laughs> Lee Daniels and Taraji uh, Henson, but uh, I don't. I, I spoke with Jesse a few times, and he seemed like a great... Uh, respectable man, but again, like I said, I don't know what happened. But you know, if, if, if they say they have evidence and stuff, then yeah, you know, when the fans know, get to pull your phone, right? Like, like Oprah say, if you just had a little piece of sense, <laughs> you would know that this is not right. <laughs> you know, common sense ain't common as we think. You no, know, it's not like common to rappers, it's common <laughs> in your brain. And you gotta have that sense. If you don't have that sense, then we don't know how to spin you. Did anybody get that? No, I see you trying to get them balls. <laughs> I, 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 look, you got rapper friends. I, the next thing I know, a lot of people have been making a big issue about J-Lo performing at the Motown event, man. They felt like that was very, uh, it, very. As, uh, they tell a lot of people to that as an insult because if you know anything about Motown, right. they wasn't really big on sexiness and dance move. They was really big on, you better sit here and sing. Right, right, correct. And so you, now people think that was oversaturated. And on top of that, you had Smokey Robinson sing for all of 30 seconds. They like smoke you, Robinson. He came up there, who yeah. Then he walked off the stage. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but you know what? That's 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 like uh, J Lo. You know, that's J Lo. You know, you oh, she yeah. can do anything she want to do. I guess I don't know. Yeah. I'm gonna have to agree with you on that one, Sandra. No, she I don't can know. do what she wanna do. She like, you know, that's just like giving questions all elections. But but then Smokey <laughs> Robinson stated that again. Like you know, she was right. Like if she wanted to do do hip hop or do whatever the case it is, Motown. Then if she wanna do that, she can. You know. She, she's Motown anyway. She was with P. Diddy. Come on now. <laughs> you know, and she was with Atlanta. That, that, so that she knows Motown. Motown but nah, she been on. through Motowns, but that's not Motown. It's well, whatever it was. It's a difference. Yes, it's but, a difference. But, 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 yeah, but a lot of people like to do classic and stuff in their songs and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, she she do a good. She did Selena. She act like Selena. She act like Motown. You know, come on now. You know, she Listen, fam. She do. A lot of Motown, <laughs> only people that got, like, replaced members to Temptation. It's probably hard to get the original Temptation, but you could have get some, you could have got some people from the culture. Motown was not just a record label. That was a movement. A when, movement. You, you know, when, when Detroit and Michigan was going through and all that good stuff? Yeah. You know, you, you know, Motown was a movement. So I do feel in, in the aspect, you should have got some people to represent the, you know, these singers and did a tribute as well. Right, right. You know, that's just my personal opinion. Right, I mean, right, right, you're not finna right. see you're not finna see Jay Z and Beyonce go do Faith Hill and Garth Brooks up. So. They might. Hey, I knew somebody did uh uh I forgot Man, who let me tell you something. <laughs> you know, Jay Z and Beyonce do Garth Brooks America, burn this thing down. <laughs> Hey, I see somebody from Jay Z. Hey, they did a great thing. Not they a tribute, yo. Hey, the day the country music award be like, hey, Beyonce or Jay Z, I want y'all to cover this right here. I'm gonna tell you something. You gonna have a man, rise man. up in Kentucky, Tennessee, Alabama, Mississippi. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? I think everybody should unite together. I think, like you know, Miley Cyrus should sing. Uh, uh, what you call it? Uh, uh, Gladys Knight in the pit. The yeah, but and it, look, the, the internet almost went off. Stop playing. Next time, <laughs> stop I think playing. Miley Cyrus is doing Gladys Knight. I mean, I mean, I, like, look, I'm not saying you know, um, stick to your genre, stick right, to right, right. But like, when you're talking about paying tribute to something, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, you know a lot of celebrity people. I know you heard the stories of Prince like, right. hey, Prince like, nah, man, you ain't singing my song. Or Prince used to be real big on, like, you're not singing this or doing that. Right, but you know, you know a lot, you know a lot of these people get to trip into the Lawrence. song and stuff like that. Lauren's in the house. What's up, Lauren Dutch? <coughs> hey, hey. Hey, hey. 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 Lauren, Lauren's in the house now, you know, and uh, we're going to get her respective, perspective on uh, what, we, what was the topic, yeah. the, the the second chance speaking. flaming topic. We got about uh, five minutes left on it. Let me see if we can get you involved you in this. We talk Talking about the guy from the Empire okay. and how everything was staged and about what's going on. Like he called these people, said, "Come on over." Then he said somebody else did it. Well, it was a white person, and they found out it was two big, strong, big, cut up guys. Well, kind of Nigerian, they got Nigerian you know, at the hex on it. You know what I'm saying? And they did it, and they caught them coming back. You know. So, uh, what do you think about that? Did you hear about that story? I actually, I haven't seen the Empire. No, 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 this, no, no, no. So that's the show. We talking, about the, the show. talking about the actual actor staged the actor, yeah. uh, attack. Jesse Solet. He staged an attack and uh, pretty much had people up in the aura oh as gosh. if it was like you know white men attacked him or whatnot. Kind of find out he staged and paid. Look for four thousand dollars too for for a show doing good. You didn't wow. pay no four thousand dollars for a stage thing. I need bail money. See, I, I, I didn't know, know that. I, 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 I heard that they, they they got in, they beat him up, they threw bleach oh on him, and they said something about Trump, like, like a M, M mega. mega. That's that's Trump. But uh, uh, what is what the mega sound for? 
Make America, make, make America great again. You know what yeah. that means. Oh. Uh, roll so, up. Yeah. Yeah. Right, <laughs> roll up. I actually did not hear about any of this yet. So, you so this no. is what crazy though. Don't watch TV. It, it, that, <laughs> she that, don't get into the much. news and the topics. <laughs> no, you know, I'll be on my blog because I'll be studying these celebrities and stuff now that I'm up here. On I know, huh? I got to be you on better my better study them. I got to like, be on uh, my game. We want to ask them. Oh, I don't know. I think I'm going to ask him like, uh, did you ever go do Batman? Oh, I didn't do Batman. That ain't me. <laughs> That's uh, Christopher. It's like seeing Samuel Jackson like, hey, what's up, Morgan Freeman? Yeah. Like, oh God, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you gotta know who people yeah. are and get into those yeah, going yeah. on. But it's, so, it's crazy, man. So, what do you think about uh, the things that's going on with the with the with the Trump administration right now? I look, you know? okay, I'm gonna be honest with you. Yeah, we on the schedule. You know why he keep doing the shutdown? Why, why schedule? Because they on him. He, he don't want to go to jail. Yeah. He's like. Y'all gonna, yeah. He, he be like, yeah. every time they get close, he be like, you know what? Shut you down. Shut down. But they gonna work free anyway. We gonna work free to get you. They say, yeah, you, they know what? you can like, take our checks <laughs> away. You can take whatever you got away. We gonna come and get you. Yeah, they gonna volu- so, they, they gonna volunteer work for free for Trump. They gonna be like, you know what? Take the salary. You hey, going down, player. <laughs> hey, just like uh, <laughs> you going down. like uh, Rock Obama, uh, Barack did. Uh, Salad, uh, what's his name? Uh, Saddam. 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 No, nah, the other guy. Who? Saddam bin Laden. He just came on and said, oh, we got Saddam. him. We got him. We say, huh? We didn't even know we got he he had him because that, he, that, that's he your, was a secret. See, that's that Chicago with Obama. Everybody <laughs> keep thinking you know, Obama from the old Chicago. I'm not gonna say nothing. I'm gonna, I'm say gonna get you though. Like, what's that yeah. new cologne you wearing? Corpse Obama style. <laughs> oh my gosh! I, you know what? Some people was asking, Miss uh, Newton, what kind of cologne you used to have? When I used to say "for me only" is called. <laughs> for they used to go, me, uh, they go go look for it. I ain't but, never seen it before. What is it? Cabin Climate? Hey, uh, I'm telling you what. I mean, she's fine. You, you, you mess around one of them Jamaicans. They be selling cologne on the street. Right, They'll right. make it right down the spot. What's that? Oh, only for me. Oh, oh yeah, we, we make it for you. They put it right down your neck. Put it for me. <laughs> <laughs> but like I say, everybody, a lot of things are going on in the world today. And society is all jacked up. I think everybody should start getting along and start uniting together as one. You know, as far as with what's going on as far as with the blacks, the whites, the Hispanics, like everybody should night is one. Everybody got their own little clique going on right now because of how the world is going, how oh, Donald on. Trump is trying to separate the people. That's where um, the money is though. Right, you know right. that you know that money the money is always in the problem, not the cure. Right. You know what right. I mean? Yeah. So your money in competition. Right. But you know, that's what second chance organization that's come right. in. You saw something that real quick. Chance. That's yeah, where right. we come in. Number at, two right. ND chance. Come on, let's you do know, it. So you, we got yeah. the village people. We got Indians, blacks, whites. I won't dress like that, but we'll come together. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> so right now we're gonna go to a commercial break, and when we come back. This is going to be the second chance red carpet Sunday with Hawthorne James. If you don't know Hawthorne James, you play in the five heartbeats. Where you been? Where you been? What are you going to talk about? What are you going to talk about? Uh, nothing, nothing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My hours hours are from nine, nine to five. five. And Look, man, he knocked out. that dude perm loose in that movie. <laughs> like, <laughs> his perm came in loose. His perm came in loose. It shook everywhere. I'm like, hey, straighten your hair, man. Hey, well, give me a scene when you straighten your hair. He, he had a lace, he had a lace back, but not a lace front. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, so we're going to go to commercial break, and we'll be right back with Hawthorne James. Hi, this is Tiffany Newtall, and you are tuning in to Second Chance Radio. All right, all right, we back with Second Chance Radio. We got Hawthorne James on the phone with Second Chance Red Carpet Sunday. Hawthorne James, what's going on with you, my man? What's up, man? Hey, what's going on, Hawthorne? Hey, man, what's going on? Tell me, I, I haven't, called to, I haven't seen you in a while, man. Last time I saw yeah, it's you, been a minute. we had a meeting together at the brunch or something, talking about Second Chance, and now it's all exploding all over San Antonio, man. Ain't that something? That's amazing. <laughs> hey, Hawthorne. Me yeah. and me and a, a, a good friend of mine named Legacy City on a radio station. We, we wanted to become, say how we can become actors and stuff like that. So we made up this scene, and we wanted you to see that if you like it or not, you're gonna prove it, and we're gonna keep doing it. You want to hear? You ready? Oh, 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 look out! Here we go! Here we go! Here we go! Oh, what you want to talk about? Nothing. Nothing. What oh, you want to talk about? Oh, no. What you talk about? Oh, oh no! Don't talk about me! Oh no! Sir. Oh, that's no, sir. Thing. no, sir. no sir. What do you think about that? Think about that, Mr. Hawk. Mr. <laughs> I approve this message. <laughs> Oh, oh my God! Oh, so, no, so hold on. What are you doing today? Let the people in around the world know today. We got some 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 people don't want to ask some uh, questions for you, and I ask some questions for you. But you know, uh, inquiring minds want to know. There you go. No, uh, I lost my tongue real quick. I'm like, what am I want to talk about? Hey, what's that bus? Yeah. 
Hold on, go ahead and take the flow, man. Let, let them know what's going on with you, what you're doing. Well, you know, just trying to do a little work here and there. I got to, uh, just working on a film called Flint Tales about the, uh, about the Flint water crisis. We just about finished with it. We got a couple more things to shoot on that, some reshoots to do. And uh, I've been in Flint and Detroit working on that. And I uh, did a film in New York called Keys. And uh, doing a lot of plays. That was in Philly doing a play, and uh, probably looks like we'll be doing uh, be doing that show in New York in in May. Mm -hmm. So you know, just, just you know, trying to make that living, man. Trying to make that money. Trying to do something positive. Trying to be, you know, trying to do things, yeah. projects that that show black folks who we really are, as opposed to that Hollywood nonsense that they want to, you know, uh -oh. right. put us in. So. That's, right. That's where I'm at right now. Oh, man. Hey, 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 your best show was... Can I ask you a question, Hartthorn? When you was yes. doing the kicking that guy, what you want to talk about? What you want to talk about? What you want to talk about? And your hair started getting loose. <laughs> did, why did you just turn permit back up and just straighten it out? Cut the scene out. So, oh, let's straighten this hair back up. Up, oh, let's straighten it. You, you, your hair was just everywhere. And then you said, now, if you have any more questions, <laughs> my office hours are from... Yeah. Oh man, man! <laughs> How bad is that? Can we can we can we, can we stop y'all from acting my, my stuff? You know, you know, you're just killing my stuff, man. Hey, I'm good, I'm man. Not, I'm not you're, you're, stuff, man. <laughs> you're killing my stuff, <laughs> man. It, it, just ask me the question. Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm not gonna act no more. I, I did my scene already. But um, first, <laughs> I just want to talk about a fun fact and just um confirm. One, of, I know you are um. You you study Shakespeare in college and stuff of that nature, sir. And uh, I was told that I uh, read that one of the, the scenes in there was put in the movie because of you recognize the the funeral scene was something that you recognized from the Shakespeare thing that was like you know, a part of the script. Is that true? Well, that uh, originally I wasn't in the funeral scene. Oh, okay. Now during rehearsal, I went to Robert and uh, I said I need to be in the funeral scene. He said, Oh yeah, you, yeah, you should be in that. So. Uh, so all the time for for months long, he didn't have anything for me to do in the funeral scene because he hadn't written anything. Well, I had gone to school in London and I studied at the London Shakespeare Academy because uh, Ted Land got me a scholarship to scholar, uh, to study over in London. So I fell in love with Richard the Third. It's yes. a great play, yes, and in the play, Richard kills the kills the king. His I think it's his cousin, and his wife uh, is as a is at the funeral. Lady Anne. And he sweet talks uh, the the wife over the casket and wins her, and she becomes his queen. Yes, so exactly. you, you know, as, as I'm as I'm doing the doing, you know, going over the script, trying to figure out some stuff. I, you know, I figured out in my mind that now this isn't in the script, but you know, as an actor, you have to figure out certain things to make motivation exactly. work exactly. for you. Correct. So Correct. in in my mind, the reason I'm so mad at Jimmy is because Eleanor was originally mine. And he stole wow. it from me. Oh, okay. So wow. that that was my, you know that's something that in my in, in my mind as an actor, so I can so I can go and, and go at him like this. Oh wow. So so in the morning we set the scene where he comes to my house, and 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 Eddie Kane is in there. Uh -huh. So we got that scene in the morning. But but the previous night I had written out this thing this scene because Robert hadn't written anything for me in the in the in the uh, in, in in for for the shooting the next day. I said, well, I'm gonna try and get her back. And I and I was as we as we finished that scene in the morning, we were riding back to the church to film the funeral scene. And I'm sitting in the front seat in the passenger side. Rob is sitting right behind me. The producer is in is in the uh, sitting behind him in the back seat. And I had this piece of paper in my hand that I had written the night before. And I said, I didn't know Robert that well, but I said, forget it, man. Here, Robert. Yeah, I handed it to him in the back. I just over my shoulder. I said, "Hey, I think I need to say this in the funeral scene." And he read it, and he just edited it down and said, "Yeah, that's what you need to do. We'll shoot that." So that's how that came about. That's that's the direct spiel from Shakespeare. Definitely, definitely. Right, that's, right. That, you got okay. it. And okay. by the way, man, you got more degrees than a thermometer. You pretty, pretty yeah, intelligent. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> how many degrees yeah. you got, uh, Hawthorne? So what? How many threes you got, Hawthorne? How many I have a bachelor's from Notre Dame. I have a master's from University of Michigan. I got scholarship offers from Yale and Cornell to work on my doctorate, and I said I didn't want to do that. And I taught at Illinois State University in the theater department for two years. And then, uh, and then, like I say, Ted Lance got me the uh, scholarship to go study in London. 
Professor John. So I was there for, for several months. You ain't no joke. Great, great experience for me because I've been doing Shakespeare since high school. But actually going to London and studying and seeing the people, interacting with the people, uh, and, 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 and seeing the difference between uh, uh, the British people and the French people, you know, sometimes you have a tendency, it's like, it's like if you know Asian people, Koreans look nothing like Chinese. Chinese look right. nothing like Japanese. Japanese look not, nothing like Thai. But but a lot of people, you know, until you until you recognize that, you have a tendency to lump all Asians together, and they look nothing alike. Well, I thought all Europeans looked alike until I went to uh, until I went to Europe. French people look nothing like the British people. They're an entirely different looking people. So so uh, as uh, when Shakespeare says something about the French in the place. You know, all my life I've been heard about how the how the British react when the French's name is brought up. If they were boo and hiss, well, now I understand because they really are different people. Right. That's correct. And they don't like each other. Well, I remember one time we was went to um, Chinatown. <laughs> remember that time, man? You rode to Chinatown, got that massage, and uh, you say, "Hey, man," he said, "What's wrong with you?" I said, "What you mean?" You said, man, you I, you were snowing all day. I was going on. And I said, man, it just felt so good. But I don't know if they were Chinese or what was them Korean people? No, they weren't Korean. Uh, when we got those massages, they were more like Thai Vietnamese. Oh, that's what they was. Okay. Yeah, I think they were Vietnamese. Okay, the same people when I had my second chance show with you. That that was Vietnamese too. They was Vietnamese. Basically. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that, that's a little. And I think that was a little Vietnam that we were that that we were over in that area. Yeah, that's it was. Yeah, that's what it called, little Vietnam. That's exactly what it's called. Yeah, so little those Vietnam. people that gave me that, that we get, got those massages from were Vietnamese. Okay, got you. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. I was snowing, boy. You was like, hey man, what's wrong with you? What you mean, man? I man, that was the bomb, man. That was that was. <laughs> shit. That was nice. That was nice. <laughs> After we got done with that segment, they said we gonna hook y'all up. Boom, and we was boy. It was a wrap then. I fell asleep. <laughs> yeah, but I'm telling you, we going out to eat, and then we so got there. Man, we, we had a great time, man. <laughs> so we did. Yeah. Well, while y'all are over here making me jealous of a massage, <laughs> um, I just wanted to ask you, Mr. James, how are you doing this Lauren Donch? Uh, it's nice to have you on our show. Yeah, great. How about you? Wonderful. Thank you. Cool. Um, so I just wanted to see, where did you start acting? When did you, uh, how did you get into the field exactly? Well, that's, I think it started, I mean, I did my first play when I was in kindergarten. Wow. So there's something about it. Oh, there's an affinity towards it. I mean, then I didn't do anything to like eighth grade where I was in a play, and then and in high school, it, it was uh, I did in Chicago. I I done a, a show. I, I did Hamlet. That's the first Shakespeare I ever had ever done. And there's a priest, Father Barry Schneider, who every other year he would do one year he would do Hamlet, and the next year he would do Raisin in the Sun, and he alternated it. Well, the, uh, my sophomore year, we got to do Hamlet, and he took the play on the road. It's, it's an amazing feat. You know, I'm a kid from the south side of Chicago who, you know, who didn't have enough to eat all the time. You know, I had beans, and you know, and we had greens. You know, the typical, you know, that, that you know, that, that's the beans, right? people that didn't have money. And I'm thinking, <laughs> this is normal. Well, Father, Father Barry took the play on the road and we went to like Minnesota, we went to Wisconsin, we went to different cities in Illinois, and we stayed at white people's houses. Okay. okay. And these kids had their own rooms, they had meat at every at every meal, they had land around their houses, and this was the first time I had to really experience that on on a on a on, on, on a level that was normal for other people. Privilege, and I thought to myself, I'm 16 years old, and I said, I it submitted it, I think is, I, I want me some of this. Right. This right. is what I want. Mm. This is how I want to live. Correct. Because it was a whole different experience. Mm. Right. And and theater had allowed me that, that opportunity. Mm. So when I got to college, when I got to Notre Dame, I, 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 I went to major, I went to English major, music, and art as majors. And I said, this is stupid. I know what I want. I want, I want to I want to I want to do theater. So I became a theater major, and and not knowing if I could make a living at it, thinking well maybe I'll just teach or something. But in the back of my mind, I, I knew something. I wanted more than that. 
And then I went to Illinois State. I got a job uh, after I got my master's at Michigan. And at which, uh, I, 23 years old, I got to do King Lear in a 1,500-seat house. Oh, wow. See, this is a story. See, my confidence as an actor has always been there. Because even in high school, I wasn't playing Hamlet. But I knew I should have been playing Hamlet. I knew I should have been Hamlet, as opposed to the guy that, that he had, who was a senior. So, but in my mind, I knew how good I was. And so when I got to Michigan, there was a white guy who was the big hot actor at the University of Michigan. And the, and the, and the uh, show, and the big show in the spring was King Lear. And everybody in the department, all the professors, everybody said, well, he's going to be Lear. The, the white guy's going to be Lear. He's going to be, he's the one because he's the best. And in my mind, I never said this to anybody, but in my mind, I said, okay, y'all don't even know. You don't understand. Mm -hmm. right. Who's going to be playing Leah? Mm -hmm. I went into that audition and kicked butt and got the role. Mm. That's so, so, neat. so in my mind, I've always known how good I was. But then after I graduated, I didn't have a job after I got my master's. And I, and I didn't know what to do because... Uh, I, I didn't. I didn't think I could make a living being an actor. Go to New York. I didn't have any money. You know, it's expensive to go to New York. It, it's expensive to go to L.A. Right. And I didn't have right. any money. So I finally wound up got, getting a job teaching at Illinois State, and I stayed there for two years. And after a while, it's like I know I didn't want to teach, but that sucked. The politics in the teaching as a, <laughs> in the university is just a I, I like his honesty because everybody yeah. beat college, college, right, college. Right. And now, and Mr. Yeah. And it, it's like it sucks being a teacher. I, you know, and, and my last year at Notre Dame, I, I, I had 12 hours of my last semester. I had 12 hours of independent study. So I substituted in the South in school system my whole senior, uh, uh, my last semester. So I taught everything from kindergarten all the way through the university. So... The girl I was dating at Illinois State, she had to do her internship in her uh, parks and rec major. So she moved to L.A. for the summer. And she's the only person I knew in L.A. I didn't, I didn't know anybody in New York, really. But all my friends had gone to New York to be actors. So I decided, well, I'm going to try this. I'm going to see if I can do this. And it's either go to New York or go to L.A. And the reason I went to L.A. was, number one, my girlfriend was out there. And I had a place to stay, at least. And also, I knew if I made it in New York, nobody would know me in L.A. But I, if I made it in L.A., I could always get a job in New York. Yep. So that's why I moved to L.A. And so it started from that. And then when I got to L.A., I started doing a lot of theater. I mean, there's a place called the Inner City Cultural Center where C. Bernard Jackson ran it and kept those doors open. And, and what a vibrant place that, that, that place was. I mean, we did. I did show after show after show after show. You know, I'd have to do my nine to five job in the day, nine and at night five. I'd be working on two. <laughs> <laughs> hey, although you said it, nine to five. That's your office hours. <laughs> hey, although, but people don't know you as an individual like myself. You know, uh, they see you with the movie. They see you how you doing things. But you really encouraged me, man, the times we spent together, all the times we was around each other. Uh, you encouraged me uh, to keep moving and stuff with Second Chance. And, like, you, we met again, and you was like, hey, if I was you, I'll, I'll keep this going. Now it's in San Antonio, Texas, and we have a great team like Legacy City, Lauren Dunch, and all the rest of us. Uh, I sent you some things from my intro from my um, um, great production crew. Gus and his uh, wife Christy. Also, Legacy has some production things that he do as well. Legacy City. Uh, what do you think about this radio show and about the TV show that's going on in San Antonio, Texas? What is your perspective of that? It's it's very well needed. It's 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 important. And see, this is what I always tell people. I, I do interviews, whether it be internet radio, whether it be you know a regular radio station, whatever it may be. It's, I do I do a lot of stuff with black folks because this is what. We, is needed because, I, I, you know, it's so important because every day we wake up, every day we wake up, when you turn that television on, when you, when you listen to the radio, when you read a book, when you read a newspaper, it's, it's constantly, you're constantly being bombarded with, you ain't worth it, you ain't worth it, you ain't never going to be worth it, you ain't never going to be worth it. Well, now we have to start counter-programming ourselves. And, and, and second chance is a way of counter-programming. It's, it's a way of saying, you are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. And we have to understand and listen to that. 
and it's important. Second chance, it's just, it, the, the, the name itself tells you, I need that second chance. Too many brothers don't get a second chance. Too many sisters don't get a second chance. Right. Right. And, and we should have we should have had the chance in the first place. But we're caught up in the system under which we live nowadays. So we need people. We need these radio shows. We need these television shows to counter program the, 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 the what do you call that? The, the stuff uh, uh, you, you're brainwashing right. Right, right, that you're right. constantly right. under. Right. Definitely, definitely. So yeah, you're important to me. I'm on this radio show because I want to tell people this is not this is not hard to do. It, it's it's it, you have to you have to be determined, mm -hmm. but you can do it if you want to. Right. And right. I'm here to help. I'm here to tell you there is no secret to this nonsense. Yeah, I have made certain things, but I'm not anywhere close to where I want to be. Wow. There are things that I still want to do in this world wow. because there's work to be done. That's correct. Martin Luther and King and Malcolm X, they're dead now. They died for us. So right. I have to pick up that mantle and run with it. Mm, that's correct. Ooh. Hey, so hold on. Look, we out of time right now, man, but we appreciate everything you're saying. Uh, I know you appreciate uh, Shout out to Tommy Carver. You know, he, he, he let us do the radio station and stuff like that. He's one of our, uh, he's a, com a commissioner. Uh, we miss you, Tommy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, he's a commissioner here. And, yeah, uh, yeah he's doing a lot of great things for the community as well, as well as his, you know, his mom and stuff like that. So, yeah, we like to shout them out for the radio station. But, yeah, thank you very much, uh, Heart on for being, for being, you know, it's an honor mm -hmm. being on the show and stuff like that. And we love you. Heart on James, everybody was on that second chance red carpet we Sunday. Love we love you, Heart on, man. And I'm going to hit you up soon, back. man, as you come down with us and start doing some autographs and start doing the second chance thing with us, we man, and hosting. And we appreciate what you said, and we love you very much, second man. Chance Thank you. Appreciate Thank you, bro. Bye. I need a second chance. I need a second chance. I need a second chance. Second chance to change the world. 